Is it possible to be mindful of an experience without applying a mantra? In other words, to be mindful of one seeing without saying, seeing, seeing? This is, uh, points out the problem with the word mindful. It's a very bad translation of the word sati. Because of course you assume if that's all it is, then why do you need to use the mantra? But sati means to remember or to remind yourself. In this case I like remind yourself, although it's possibly not a literal translation either, so remember is, is, is better. But what are you trying to remember? You're trying to remember the essential quality of the experience, the, the objective reality. You're trying to avoid any kind of um, extrapolation of the object. And to do that, you require something called tirasanya. This is the proximate cause of sati. Tirasanya means the recognition of something. Sanya means recognition. Tira means firm or strong. So you need to uh, augment your sanya. Sanya arises anyway. Tira sanya means you augment it. You reaffirm it. So the augmenting has to come about. So the question then is, uh, what are you doing to bring that about if not reminding yourself? Now, as I mentioned in the first question, as I explained in the first question, exactly what you're doing, you know, you're you're bringing it back to just this is it, or so you're keeping it there. So you it goes along, and there comes a point where the mind can interject and say, "This is good. This is bad. This is me. This is mine." Instead, you you hold it there. The function of mindfulness is to hold the object, to keep it from, or to hold the mind and keep it on the object. To keep the mind from um, moving away from the object, uh, so that's what this noting is. So the challenge that I give to anyone who asks this question is: Can you explain a better way to do what we quite clearly and effectively accomplish? The point is that people don't want to do this strange thing of using a mantra. It's really kind of um, it's not a very good question. I mean, everyone asks this. I get this question on again and again and again, but it's not a very good question. And I think it comes about because of our preconceptions and because of how how we've come to this through sort of this tradition. Um, I mean, a tradition, this sort of this intellectual understanding of meditation as being some kind of sort of vague, sort of nothing of just sitting there and, and you know, I don't know, watching the breath, I think, is a, is a big one, but not really doing anything. When in fact, you know, before we came to Buddhism, most people's understanding of meditation was a mantra. You know, what, what, do you, what is the word mantra? Where does it come from? Where have we heard this? It's a Hindu thing, you know. When, when we knew of meditation as a Hindu thing, we, we thought, well, meditation is where you would do om, you know, you have a mantra. And what good is the mantra? It focuses the mind. It has a real definite uh, uh, purpose and benefit to it. That's what this is all about. It's, it's nothing new or special. It's that. It's, it's meditation the old way. It's old school. Uh, the, the, this new idea of just sitting there and zoning out, and, you know, it's a very hippie thing. You know, when you go to these folk festivals and they think, yeah, you just become one with the universe. It's not very technical or very professional. Professional meditation, what we're doing is professional, that's what it is, professional meditation, where you are really taking this seriously, and you're not taking this as some kind of feel-good thing. This is something you're going to do systematically, uh, methodically, and it's going to it's going to have real results, definite results. It's going to be scientific. To be scientific, you have to be sure. It's like, why do you need a double blind hmm? in a science experiment? Because of the potential for bias. Hmm? It's very clear. It's exactly that. You could say, oh, I'm just going to sit and observe things. Well, okay, potentially you can become enlightened. Absolutely. Is it possible? Yes, possible. Likely? Not likely. 
Why? Because the potential for bias, if you just let it go and, you know, it's like, it's like conducting experiments saying, well, let's just have people come in and tell us, you know, what happened. You know, tell us their experiences. You know? How can you do that without introducing bias? Even when you have just an experimenter, they say it's not enough. You need to have someone observing the experimenter, you know. The person doing the experiment has to be watching the person actually administering the drugs and uh, etc. You know, double blind. Can I ask something related to this? Sure. Now you you want to do this during your daily tasks as well, right? You're just sort of always noting what you're doing. But if you're doing something very detail oriented that has many many steps, when I've tried to do this with very detail oriented work, it, you know. Mm -hmm. it's kind of frantic, you know, in your mind to try to keep up with every little piece of, of a detail-oriented task. Would you mm -hmm. just kind of consolidate things so that you're not in your mind saying, you know, flipping, turning, you know, just really fast in your mind as you're doing something? Well, it has um, a potential to change your... You can think of it as we don't always... Um, get angry, you know, or greedy, you know, it's not all defiled. Our mind is not constantly defiled, but it slips into a s sort of a, um, a stream of defilement. So it, it shifts. So you'll find um, you, you, you are generally angry, you know. That's why you can be angry for a period of time, right? Because it's, it's that period of anger. Likewise, you don't have to be mindful. You don't, you don't have to remind yourself every moment in order to be mindful, in order to have sati arise. All we're doing is nudging it in that direction. So there's an explanation of why it doesn't have to be every moment. The point being, you can do general acknowledgement. And that nudges you in the direction of wholesomeness. You know, that's enough. So when, when I said what we're trying to do is to stop that moment of reactivity, well, it's that that moment um, is is every, it's way too fast for us to do every moment, but by nudging ourselves in that direction, by catching like in a pulse, it it inclines you in that direction. This is why you'll be mindful and you'll still be getting angry because it's very you can't catch them all. But by nudging in that direction, the anger will subside, or the anger, the greed, the bad stuff will subside and you'll be pulling yourself in that direction until all the minds are in that way. All you need is, or all you can do, as you say, is, is, uh, is occasionally. But by occasionally we mean like once a second kind of thing. So Mahasi Sayada actually puts, the, puts a def, definite value there. He says once a second is a, a good acknowledgement. Hello? Can you hear me? 